Have you ever had that feeling where scope creep? Whoa, whoa, what's going on? Wait, is that, is that Ollie from Mashup Games? Good guess. I challenge you to a game dev duel. Oh, you are so totally on. Let's do this. So, here are the rules. We have to make each other art assets that then we exchange and use to make a game out of. So you'll make a game out of the art that I've given you, and I'll make a game out of the art that you've given me. And we have a total of 24 hours. Sounds good? Good. Now that we know the rules, it's time to sharpen our pencils, get our big brains ready, and get this challenge started. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Good news everybody, Game Carnival, the virtual game industry event that launched last year, is coming back on May 11th and 12th. In 2020, Game Carnival hosted thousands of industry attendees, 220 plus exhibitors, and 5,000 plus meetings. This year, you can expect all of that and more. A totally new state-of-the-art virtual experience now built on Gen XP's platform. Advanced networking features so you can more easily connect with industry pros. One-on-one -on -one virtual meeting rooms where you can build key relationships. Plus, get valuable insights from industry experts on not one, but two stages of speakers. Game Carnival is shaping up to be the must-attend event for developers this year. They've even partnered with other brands like Sega, and you know how much I like Sunic the Hoochog? It's free to attend and you only need a web browser to join, so make sure to sign up today. To start things off, we need to make some artwork. What I think is really cool about this challenge is not only are we making games, but we're making artwork for each other before we even get started. Now, to make things easier for both of us, we decided to only make top-down artwork. I've made a lot of platformers in the past, so I thought it would be a cool way to try something different. So for the art style, I wanted to make it small, but have a lot of detail and character to it. So the first thing I did was everyone's favorite word. Research. Yes, I know it's boring and maybe it's not fun doing research, but I find that it really helps me, especially when I don't have a lot of time working on a game. I thought a cool art style to emulate is kind of the Game Boy Advance or Game Boy era. If you've ever been on one of my streams, you'll notice that I kind of do this style quite a bit. And the number one place for finding this reference is the Spider's Resource. They literally have all the reference you could ever need for a Game Boy game, and I've been using it for years. So now that I dialed in my style, it was time for me to get to work. I had no idea what type of game Ollie was thinking of making, but I thought I would try to make a high fantasy, kind of top-down Zelda game or an RPG to give some wiggle room. I made keys, chests, equipment, enemies, players, basically anything that could be useful for making that style of game. Having finished the artwork, it was time for us to exchange assets. Upon receiving the artwork from Ollie, I got really excited. He made a lot of cool stuff. He made houses, water, goblins, he made all these supplies. It almost kind of reminded me of like a survival type game. But now came the hard part. What type of game was I going to make? And what engine was I going to use? Now normally for game jams or quick turnaround games, I like to use Construct because it's super fast and easy to use. But for this challenge, I honestly felt more comfortable just using Godot instead. After using Godot for over a year, in some ways I feel like using Godot is a lot faster than Construct. And I also had the crazy idea of what if I made this game 2.5D, or a 3D game that had pixel art basically. And I also thought I would throw Ollie for a loop by taking his artwork and using it in a way he never thought I would. And this was the hardest part for me. I didn't have a lot of time, and at first I wanted to create maybe some sort of survival game, but it's just too ambitious, too long, too open-ended. Next, I thought about the idea of making kind of like a Zelda dungeon. I'm a huge fan of Zelda dungeons, and they're super complex and fun to play through, but I also realized that the reason they're so complex and interesting is because it takes time to make them. Still struggling to figure out what I want to do, I decided I would at least make it an FPS. That would be an interesting way to show off the art while not having to program too much. And while I was building out the basic engine, something dawned on me. I could create a game, the ultimate game, the most original game. I could create a maze game. Now the biggest challenge for me in this project was trying to figure out a way to make 3D pixel art. I didn't want to use voxel because that was kind of breaking the rules by recreating the art, but I definitely wanted the 3D environment to have the art in it other than just like a flat billboard. And here's where a super handy plugin for Blender came into play. It's called SpryTile. And as the name would imply, it basically lets you build out tiles in 3D space using pixel art. I've dabbled with it in the past, but never had a whole lot of success. But I was shocked to find how easy it was. And I quickly made a map just to test and run around and see if it worked in game. 
So I used some software to generate a maze that I feel like would be a decent size and give enough challenge. And then I would use that as a base for creating my maze in Blender. And this is where I knew the bulk of my time would probably be spent is just making this maze. But surprisingly, it wasn't as bad as I thought and it actually was kind of relaxing working on it. Now that I had a beautiful maze, I needed to populate it with characters because you can't have humor without characters. Luckily for me, I've made a ton of dialogue systems in Godot, so it didn't take any time at all to integrate it. And this is where I look back at the art set that Ollie sent me, and I realized that there was an elf. A little elf. A good guess elf. But it would be a boring game if all the characters were helpful and on your side. So I thought, what if this isn't good guess? What if this is bad guess? Now I don't want to spoil the story at all, but let's just say that this game has an underlying secret to it. Something's going on in this maze, and there's two ways to play it. You can just play through the maze and beat the game, or you can take your time and look for clues and learn what really is happening. Let me know your guys' theories in the comments below. So now that I had a maze and characters, I had to create a final area, and I felt like a house was a perfect way to end it. It felt like you, your whole goal was just to get home. But it was running out of time, so I tried to work quickly, implement some music, some sound effects, and some basic UI stuff for player accessibility. Lastly, I exported out the game and uploaded it onto itch.io. The only thing left to do was have Ollie play it. Hey everyone, this is Ollie from Mashup Games. I'm playing Good Giss's game he's made out of my art, which looks amazing already. I love the text. That is, I love the sound effects too. I wonder how he made that. Oh, I just jump it. Okay. Anything hiding there? No secrets? Trap? What trap? I want to go home. Was my home back there? It didn't look much of a home. Oh. I feel like I'm being tricked by this note. Is it so? This is a like a maze puzzle game then, really. But... Oh, hello. William the Scholarly Goblin. Why are you getting angry? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of hostility here. This is just confusing. Oh, the door is that? Uh, I can talk to the door. I can just talk to everything, can't I? Oh, of course. Now the door's laughing at me too. Everyone's laughing at me in this game. I wonder how many times Goodgiz play tested this and then just didn't know where to go <laughs> himself. <laughs> <laughs> How did you figure out my- wait no! This is- oh this is- oh it is home! Yay! What's the end? Well, that was really cool! No I really liked that! I really liked how you did yours 3D too and the music and sound is great! It's definitely got- this game definitely has its character. Well, go subscribe to me! So that was it. That was our game challenge adventure. And I know I say this every video, but it was a lot of fun to work on and I learned a lot from it. A couple takeaways I have are that Sprite Tile is incredibly easy to use. And honestly, if you haven't tried it out, give it a shot. Also, you don't need to overcomplicate a game to make it fun. Just by adding humor and dialogue really creates a fun experience without having to add guns or explosions. Now, if you would like to play the game for yourself, it's in the description below. Also, if you would like to use the art assets, you can download them as well on the itch.io page. And they're completely free to use commercially or for personal use. Also, if you'd like to see Ollie's game and my reaction to it, make sure to check out his video, which will be coming out sometime next week. As always, if you have any questions or thoughts about the game, please leave them in the comments down below. I really want to see if you guys can figure out the secret lore and just get your thoughts on it. Also, a huge shout out to Rybred, James Kennedy, and Heath Sargent, and all the other fantastic Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome and you help make these videos a reality. If you'd like to watch more of my videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell, and also hit a like. It helps a lot and I appreciate it. But as always, I will see you guys next time for another game dev adventure. Thank you.